I'm, I'm Ted Gardner and I'm an interviewer for the uh, library's Veterans Project and I'm interviewing Jim Higgins, Cincinnatian, and uh, we're here at the Public Library on the, uh, on the 26th of April uh, 2007 and uh, Dennis Daly is our operator and we're very grateful to the Public Library of Cincinnati to be so generous and uh, so much a part of the Library of Congress's project. Uh, Jim, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you and uh, uh, you look like a rugged guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> uh, so you were born in uh, Norwood, were you? No, I was born in Madisonville. In Madisonville? I moved to Norwood in the sixth grade. Okay. Graduated from Norwood High School. Okay. What elementary school did you go to? Norwood View. Norwood View. Yeah. Still there. Madisonville School is gone. But right. Yes. Yeah, so it's worn down. Yeah. Many things have changed over the years. Uh, what year were you born? 1925. 1925. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, it's um, uh, as I told you before, it's such a pleasure and for me and uh, being a historian. And a Navy veteran too, in World War II. It's a, it, it just enriches my life to meet people like you and be able to discuss it. And the important thing that you're being recorded for history yeah. because people say, well, you know, I didn't do much or uh, <laughs> I've forgotten about it. I don't want to think about it as history. Well, I kind of gently stick with it and I say, now look, it's important that you talk and tell your story. Anything you Everyone know. has a story. Anything you want to know. And, and you know, uh, we don't want to lose these stories. Um, what kind of a family did you have? Brothers and sisters? Or? I had a twin sister who's still alive. Oh, and I have a uh, younger brother, 10, 10 years younger. Oh, he lives in uh, Maryland, St. Michael's, Maryland. St. Michael's, Maryland. Oh, that's He's got good. a yacht up there. Well, we were right. able we were able two summers ago to get on his boat, go down the Potomac up or down the Chesapeake up the Potomac, anchor at Alexandria, and we went over to the museum, the uh, or the uh, memorial for World War II. Oh, Got a lot of wonderful! Pictures. Gosh, what an experience! Yeah, that was great. We spent four days anchored in Alexandria, went into Washington every what day. What a neat deal! I'll say. Well, that's great. Um, going back to your childhood. <clears throat> Did you have any particular, you said you, you're a sports uh, personality, uh, you love sports and so forth. What sports did you play? Well, it, it, uh, my dad owned a bar in Norwood, and uh, I started in there at 14, and he said, if you don't play sports, you come and work. Uh -huh. So I sat on the bench through every sport, <laughs> every sport. <laughs> and finally, in my senior year, I was lucky enough to come in third in the state in the half mile, which was pretty good. Boy, I'll say. Uh, and uh, so that, but, uh, what I did mostly was swim, which is the reason I got in the Navy, because mm -hmm. I was a pretty good swimmer. Good. And I swam, we didn't swim competitively, but we could go to Coney Island and swim, and sure. swim across the river several sure. times. So you kind of specialized in the 880, huh? That was my race. That was your race. Yeah. Boy, that's a grueling race. <laughs> I got tired. Oh, you got to go all out for yeah. a half a mile, and that's tough. <laughs> I also ran uh, on the uh, Roosevelt Base Track team. Uh, that was in 1946. 46, yeah. Uh, I was stationed at Roosevelt Base uh, after the war. Okay. That's in Long Beach. And they had a track team, and we did go up once to the you see, you see, yes, where they had the Olympics. We were in one match up there. I wasn't in shape, but it was fun. It was oh, fun. I should say. Well, uh, going through Norwood High, uh, of course, by that time the war was on, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, we were in the Ohio Theater on the December 7th, which was a nickel, and we all went down on Sundays. Got out in the extra, they had extras in the yeah. big paper war. I thought Pearl Harbor was in the Philippines. Sure. We went to school Monday and we all marched around saluting, you know, because we figured we'd be in. It was all a joke, which turned out to be not a joke. Not a joke. 
And we got, we heard Roosevelt, they put us in the auditorium, we heard Roosevelt's speech. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, so the so, war was on. Yeah, so uh, you and a bunch of your buddies all went in together, did you? Everybody went in our class <clears> except <throat> one guy, he had the liver problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was 17, I uh, graduated on the, I think the 11th of June and was up in uh, Great Lakes Naval Trades the next day. Great Lakes, oh, yeah. Okay. I had signed up for the Air Force. I took all the tests, except I didn't have any eyes and they wouldn't let me in, which broke my heart. But the Navy turned out to be wonderful yes. for me. Well, I found, I found a similar experience. And uh, <clears throat> you're exactly right. The Navy had a special, special feel to it, oh, yeah. a special spirit. And uh, I can remember talking to a, to a Marine uh, during the war that uh, I encountered in Pearl Harbor, and uh, I said, I admire you guys so much, because oh, yeah. you're on the ground and you're fighting in those desperate situations. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I'd rather, much rather have my feet on the solid ground than being out in the deep water like you were. So, you know, it's... I got in trouble for my swimming in Great Lakes. We had to jump off of like a 25-foot tower. Yeah. Because that's the average height for the ship to drop. And sure. you, know, you had to splash like it was oil burning. Well, I was pretty good, and that pool up there is big. So I went to the bottom of the pool and went all the way to the end underwater. It'd be like 100 yards, you yeah. know. And I came up behind it, and they thought I drowned, and they had people running. Oh. I mean, oh, diving in. <laughs> I had to do uh, a week's midnight duty because of oh. <laughs> It was a joke to me, but not to them. Yeah. Oh, oh, I hope you didn't have to stand in captain's mask. No, I didn't get a mask. <laughs> they, put, they put me out there, you know, in Great Lakes, where are you going to guard? Oh, sure. I slept standing up. <laughs> of course. Well, now, from Great Lakes, uh, well, boot camp was wonderful. I went through boot camp in San Diego. And, uh, yeah, well, yes, it, was, it, was, it was great training. I, I, I could run that obstacle course twice yeah. and the rest of the guys would struggle, you know. And, and, uh, and marching on the grinder, you know, oh, it was good. hot sun, all that stuff. That was good. I, I really enjoyed that. I yeah, that was great. I love marching to the band music and everything. It was wonderful. But, um, so right after Boots, then, then what? Well, I, I took tests. I was very, I had very high scores, like the top 1%. But I didn't have the eyes for an officer candidate. Right. So I, I, I knew I was going to school and I prayed, they let you come home. I don't want to work in the office, I don't. And so they put me in the open school. Of course. <laughs> of course, which I didn't want to do. But I, I, it's the only thing I really learned in the Navy that I kept the rest of my life typing. And I had to learn myself. Oh yeah. So, you know. You, you had to teach yourself? Oh yeah. It's not just on the back. No, no, no. You had to, I could tell you I could tell you stories about that school, but uh, there were a lot of rainbow guys in it, if you know what I mean. Right. And I had to fight off a lot. Uh, anyway, that, that I, I learned a lot in there. Yeah. I learned a lot, yeah, yeah. and uh, it, that was a good experience. So you came out uh, you went third? No, I came out seen, uh, seen. and then I went to. Uh, I was assigned to the USS Conklin in Norfolk. And down there I got my first strike. And uh, we went what to... What was the name of the ship? USS Conklin. Okay. Oh, Named okay. after a Marine, I think. The battleship. Pardon? The battleship. Oh, it's a DE. Oh, it's I thought you said Wisconsin. No, his name uh, it, uh, was Conklin. Uh, and he was a... Uh, met his parents when we uh, sent, did the ship. Uh, he got killed as a Marine and they named Yes. DEs after heroes. Sure, DEs. DEs, De 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 yeah. right, right. So I, we stayed in uh, Norfolk for, I guess, two months, which was total misery. Norfolk was where the dogs and the sailors were not allowed in, on the grass, as you yeah. probably know if you're right here. Yeah. Terrible town. Yeah. Uh, went to the movie every night. Uh, and then I got sent up since I was a yeoman to Norfolk, Newark, New Jersey. Our ship was being built in Newark. So I got sent, we lived in a YMCA. Mm -hmm. I was living with the, I think a water tender and an engineer. Three of us were in a YMCA room in Newark. And we stayed there and we'd commute into the ship, just a bus ride into where the ship was being, but did paperwork, you know. Sure. Uh, 
And Newark was a good experience. Yeah. Uh, I had, we went to the uh, stage door canteen in Newark every night. Mm -hmm. We ate there, it was wonderful. And uh, I walked in there one night and lights went on and people clapped. I was like the hundred thousandth guy that walked Over in there. <laughs> and I got my picture, and I don't, I don't think I put that picture in there. I had a bird head, you know. I had uh -huh. my picture in the paper. I got a free phone call. $10, which wasn't bad, because I was only paid 17 and I got uh, uh, a cake. Right. It was a real thrill. That, yeah. that was great. Yeah. Oh, I should say. So, well, the, the USO was, was a wonderful, effective organization. Oh, was they helped yeah, right. everybody so much. I went to the one in New York yeah. and the one in Hollywood. Oh, boy. Yeah. Stage door canteen? Yeah. Wow. That's, That's first class. Yeah. I should say. Yeah, they, they always had pretty girls and uh, and uh, wonderful music and everything. Oh yeah, I saw Gene Krupa two weeks before he was arrested for marijuana. Oh, His dude. band played in that little oh. place, you know. Was he married to Anita O'Day at that time? No, no, no. I don't think, did he ever marry Anita? No. Yeah. Did yeah, they were married? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. I saw Anita O'Day several times yeah. down in, uh, in L.A. Yeah, she, uh, amazingly, she's still alive. She and is alive. You know, I, and she got into trouble, you know, because of her marriage to Gene. Yeah. He got her hooked for a well, while. She, was she a, got straightened she, out. Yeah, but she used a lot in her day. Oh, she I heard Keely Smith interviewed the other day. Oh, she's she still making records. Yeah. Now, she was making records in the 50s. And she she's sounds terrific. good. Yeah. yeah. Saw her a lot too. Great voice. Yeah. Anyway, back to the name. I should say, well, so then uh, uh, you were there at New York, you say, for what, a couple months? Well, let's see, it was there from uh, April, May, and then June, it was uh, yeah. one experience on the ship, Good. Uh, which is funny. I was sitting on a hawser, now there are ropes about this big around, you know, and the USS Missouri was going down the chute, oh, the Missouri, we were right next to it. Just launched it. And yeah, they just launched it while we were there. Well, I'm sitting on this hawser, and this old guy comes in and he's taking, you better get your ass off that rope. So I got off of it, and that hit the water, and that rope oh. went 10 feet near, you know, a chirp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's going to oh. kill. 40,000 tons of shit. Yeah, and the wave, you know, and that wave went up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh, were you lucky. I was lucky. I I'll did. say you were. I'll say. Well, then, uh, when you went aboard, uh, where, did the, where did you go? You went to the Pacific? Uh, no, we, we did a test, uh, our dry run, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Test run at uh, Bermuda. Yeah. And then we went, took a trip uh, to England in early June. Oh, of course you went. And they were taking, they were loading up for the D Day, you know, and yeah. we went, went up, just escorted. We were just a submarine, it was our business. And we escorted it almost to England. Then came back, and then we went down through the canal to San Diego. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. And uh, from San Diego, we went to Pearl. Yeah, going through the canal was that. That's awesome. Yeah, that that's must have been a great experience. The <laughs> I've talked that's that. You've been in the town. Pardon? You've been in the town. It's go long. Uh, fifty-two years. Pardon? I've been here fifty-two years. I mean, were you in Cologne, the town? Oh no, no, I didn't. Anyway, the town. Get to the canal. Though. Okay, we. <laughs> they gave us two hours, and they <laughs> walked down the street and the. Women are sitting all the way down, and the, the, the drinks for a nickel, a nickel for a rum and coke. You got two. <laughs> so th th this was funny. We the we went in, and you know it was, it was all it was the dirtiest place I've ever been, but it was fun. And we came back on ship. Well, they didn't want you to bring any whiskey on ship or any drugs. You know, we didn't have drugs in. So that you had to line up on the back of the ship. Mm -hmm. well, we had, I was in the engineering department. I was called a log room unit and I worked in it. And the two guys we had, officers, were real drunks. And they came aboard with raincoats on and each of them had a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Now they're walking back and forth. You got any whiskey? <laughs> and everybody could see it. Everybody could see it. It was funny. <laughs> so we got, that, that, that was fine going to Panama. In Panama, but on that trip, we had five Puerto Rican guys on the ship who could not speak English. Mm. But they were, you know, they were drafted in World War II. Sure. Uh, one jumped overboard. Oh my God. One got syphilis. One hung himself. Oh my God. 
and one went AWOL in San Diego. The other guy lived almost to the end of the ship and he got killed in the typhoon at the end. Oh but all five of those guys were, was a disaster. It's yeah, kind of interesting. Isn't that terrible? It's interesting. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. Okay, so then uh, you got... Um, we went to Pearl. Yeah, you took, took on supplies in San Diego. Well, and, uh, yeah, we took supplies on. Everybody had a date in San Diego. I mean, every guy. Sure. Which was bull crap. So what, what did Charlie and I do? Well, they had a burlesque house, you know, like the old gaiety down there. So we said, let's go, to, let's go to the burlesque house. So in between acts, they light up the lights and every guy in our ship was sitting there. <laughs> every guy, including the officers. <laughs> they all had dates, see? But they all lied. Oh, brother. That was funny. <laughs> one, one other funny experience at Pearl. I don't know if you want me to tell a funny story. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. But we had, our, our officer was really a drunk. He had been sunk in the Pacific, in the uh -huh. Atlantic, and he just was figure, I'm gonna drink till I die. And he tried to. But we're sitting at Pearl, and at Pearl, you lined up four or five ships. You know, you're tied sure. next to each other. Sure. And they had a movie every night. Yeah. You, you were allowed in every <clears> other <throat> night, but they had a movie. So we're all sitting there watching the movie at the end of this dock. And here comes, I can't think of his name. Here he comes, white uniform, Hat this way, cigar in his mouth, staggering down the staggering down the pier, trying to get to the ship. Staggering. He gets to the ship. We're all watching. You know, funny as so. hell. And he gets halfway up the gangplank and falls in. Oh my goodness! Fell right in. And we're laughing. And all you see is a cigar around <laughs> floating. And the captain comes out and raised hell. Oh, he was nobody wanted to get him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so finally we got him out, and that, we didn't see him again until the ship left. He, they locked him in. He's locked him in. That was funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of uh, hijinks. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like that. And uh, uh, so there you were in Pearl Harbor for several days. Or four yeah, three or four days. Yeah, uh, maybe five days. And uh, then our first trip was to uh, Ulysses. If you, you know, Lithuania was the main naval oh, yes. base in the, oh, yeah. uh, it was in It was in Inuit. Inuit was the first one. Yeah. That was the main naval base. Right. And we escorted a ship that had been hit at Palm back to Pearl. On the way back from Pearl, we picked up an unknown ship. Mm -hmm. And I was on a 40 millimeter gun, I guess. And, and we're up there, I was on the 40 millimeter. And, uh, they wouldn't answer. So we started dropping, shooting five inch, 95 times we shot at that ship and never hit it. And it was an American ship. Oh my goodness. They, who couldn't hit it? They finally lit it up with stars and they were waving flags and everything. That was all written up and that was, there was a court martial, but they exonerated. Their radio went out and they had no way to respond. You know, they couldn't respond. Oh it was a, just a, a tramp ship, you know, yeah. American. Oh. That was that was the only experience there. I wanted to ask you when I found out your name Higgins. Uh, uh, of course, there were the Higgins boats uh, in no from, from New Orleans. Oh, yeah. and, uh, great, great things that helped save help oh, yeah. save our town. Turn, turn out five a day. Oh things. my goodness, yes. And then I wondered about if you had ever known uh, the Colonel Higgins from Miami University. No. About ten years ago, no, I didn't. Who was murdered in Beirut? Oh, really? No, yeah. I did not know. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, and then I know that there was a, uh, there was a uh, um, there was a DD uh, Higgins that was named after a Revolutionary War Irish American no, really? officer. Yeah. And anyway, so your name is uh, is very well known and very familiar. Well, oh Higgins. Bernardo Higgins oh, yeah. is the George Washington of Peru. Right, exactly. There's a monument in Washington of yes. Yeah, And there's an O'Higgins Bay it was on TV the other day. They named this big bay now. Oh, so, I don't know if it's a rel relative or not. I can't know what that is. Incidentally, Higgins means genius in Celtic. So oh, it figure. does. It figures. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, now well, that's great. So there you were in Ulithi, and uh, 
Oh, uh, but then we came back. What was your prospect there? Pardon? What was your prospect? What did you prospect? Oh, did you have? A, did you know about where you were going to go out of? No, the we never knew. knew. Uh, we, but we went to anyway talk and then back to Pearl. Okay. At Pearl, I got two things. I got a hell of a sunburn trying to surf. And those little kids this high were going by me and I was falling in the water because I like water. Sure. And I got a terrible earache. Oh. Terrible earache. Yeah, the water was infected. And uh, uh, so then we went to Ulithi. Okay. And we did, uh, well, it's hard, to, it's hard to put it in. It's in that book or the thing. I think our first trip, we took the New York down to New Guinea, mm -hmm. escorted it. Mm -hmm. Then we came back. And we, in November, we were in Thanksgiving, and we came, we, we would usually go out for three or four weeks on patrol. Uh, and then we'd come in for two or three days and load up. Now, were you a lone ship on these? No, we had a squadron of four DEs. Four DEs. The Corvusay, I forget their name. Anyway, we came in and they put the whale boat down to go get supplies. Yeah. And we immediately got, as soon as it was gone, got a call to go to Yap for a submarine spot. We were, you know, we broke the code. We knew where they were going. So we got this, we didn't know they broke the code, but they, they did. So we're flying out there. And I was the helmet. And I steered the ship eight hours a day. That was my job. Oh my and it was, it was exciting because you were up there knowing where things were going on. Oh but, and usually it was pretty low key, you kind know, of right 10 degrees, left 10 degrees, stay on them too tight, you know, you do that. But this, they wanted to go in a straight line, and I got my butt shooting, hey, you get on that mark! I think, think there was number was 221, you know, uh -huh. to get to get the yap. And we got the yap. And uh, we picked up the submarine, and we, we, with another ship, and it's all written up, and we dropped, there must have been a dozen, depth bombs and finally sunk it. We did sink that submarine and it is authenticated. Great. But that was quite a thing for us. You had to put that on the uh, page. Now, <laughs> after we sunk the ship, the chiefs decided to have a party. Oh, brother. And there was alcohol, torpedo juice, which sure. was pure alcohol. And they got all the orange juice and they got in the back gun mount and had a party. Aboard ship? Yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, we, you're always aboard ship. Yeah, but this for was the whole year, I was aboard ship. There was no, no, no this, this was not a shore party. No, this was in the in the thing, <laughs> and you can hear it in there. <laughs> and the captain got word. He walked out, and he was the neatest man I ever knew. E. O. McGibbon, short, good-looking guy. He used to race in the uh, Lake Michigan up to whatever it was. Mm -hmm. He was a society guy, just sharp. Yeah. He walked back, very calm, opened the door. Gentlemen, come to attention. If you cannot come to, to mention you, we demoted two, 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 two. Now, they were all chiefs. And of course, the chief had their own quarters, their own hat. They didn't have to wear it, you know. He says, stand up, attention. <laughs> two guys could do it, and all the rest were playing there. They were, that stuff was pure poison. Oh, terrible. Uh, so, they got demoted, but they still did their same jobs. I mean, yeah. they, you know, they knew how to run it. They were always telling the guy. Lord and Ray. So, yes, <laughs> but they, they got it back in about a month. You know? yeah. that, that was funny. That was a funny story. <laughs> well, that, that sort of a situation, there was always something going on on the ship. Yeah. You know, the torpedo juice, uh, yeah. uh, somebody spirited aboard. Uh, uh, liquor, oh, um, all this kind of stuff. Gambling was big. We oh, a, gambling. We had a, a young gunner uh, a guy. He, he was a gunner's mate. Good looking, nice young guy. He cleaned out the whole ship. They never found out how he did it. But he was sending them hundreds of dollars. Now, we only got paid five bucks, you know. You know how they sure. did Because what did you do with it? Yeah. There was no place to spend it. Sure. Just I lived on peanuts. peanuts. Yeah. You could buy peanuts, you know. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> he, he cleaned up, you know, he'd write shits. I never did. I was a kid. I was only 18 when I was a kid. Uh, these, these older older guys. The, the, the senior guy was 29. Yeah, right. I met him five old years man. ago. The, that's what we called him, the old yeah. man. But he was, he was, I worked in the office. I was a young man, and we had four guys in the office. He was the senior guy. Oh, <laughs> it's 29 years old. <laughs> 
uh, and he just died. He, uh, we, we had a reunion four years ago in Florida, and he was there, and he got it. Oh, uh, great. Very, very sharp. Great, great. Anyway, that, then from there we went, I guess we went to Saipan mm -hmm. and Guam. Very nice. And we, we'd escort. That was our job. Sure. Mostly we'd escort. Uh, not not carriers or but not transport ships as much as oilers and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We do that, and I can't remember all the routes we took. Sure. But we went up there to Guam, got off on Guam, got leave on Guam, and uh, that's the first time I saw a body. There were skeletons laying around in the caves and stuff. Mm -hmm. Got back, and then we went back down, and then we went to. Uh, Philippines. We were in the Philippine invasion. Right. So we were in there. Uh, yeah. We were in there on when in D Day when when MacArthur landed. Sure. We were in there. You didn't see him, but you, you, you were always at, you were always at, uh, alert because yeah. uh, Jap Japs were coming in. Had we known what was going on, we'd have been scared to death. Because oh, yeah. you're aware that the Japanese put two whole fleets in to knock them out. And oh, you yeah. know the story of the little uh, aircraft carriers and the whole fight. I was that story is boring. In that battle? I was on a jeep carrier. Were you in that battle? When you bet you put us. Well, we were in, we didn't know about it. We didn't scared to death because they didn't wipe us out. You well, know, yeah, that we didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Your ship and our ship, uh, ours was a Kaiser built carrier. Oh yeah, <coughs> I saw plenty we of We called it a Kaiser coffin. CVE 68 yeah, okay. Linden Bay, and and uh, the skin of the ship was three eighths of an inch. <laughs> Ships were never intended to be up against surface vessels. That, that's the greatest story. We, we we had a squadron of planes aboard, and we were anti-submarine warfare people. So uh, I our task group now. I don't know if these names would bring anything memory to you or not, but. Uh, our task group was called uh, Taffy 3. And Taffy, Taffy 3 was the one that got the brunt of the, Jer of the Japanese attack. Uh, ships like, we had uh, four destroyers, three destroyer escorts, and six baby flat docks. I've seen that film many times. Oh, yeah. 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 Battle off some Go ahead, I'm here to rest. Yeah. Uh, the Johnston, yeah. the Hole, H O E L, uh, were two of the destroyers that were sunk. Yeah. Samuel B. Roberts, DE, were sunk. You know the story of the Samuel B. The, the five and guys on it? Or was that the one with the five kids on it? Or was it John's? No, no, no. That, oh, I, I know what you mean. No, that was in the typhoon. No, no. That, that was different. Oh, yeah. You mean the five brothers? Yeah. No, that, that was a little earlier in the yeah. war. Okay, go ahead. But anyway, um, so I know exactly the, the kind of ship that you were on the DE. and the kind of life you had. Yeah. You know, bouncing around, oh, slow, no. whatever you don't Oh, even in the calmest water, you know. Oh, even yeah. our ship, which was 500 feet long, yeah. still it was a baby flat. We were 300. Light, light, you know, and I, I could still see the ripple of the skin of the ship, and it would just roll like thunder. Uh, anyway, at, 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 uh, I, I never drank coffee. I didn't. Uh, but we were up for 48 hours in a row because of the air, and uh, I decided to drink and take a drink of coffee, which was probably the worst coffee ever made because oh. I'd been there for two days. I had not had a drink of coffee since. Really? <laughs> I got cured of D Day at the Philippines. Isn't that? Uh, my daughter in law's Philippines, so I, she gets a kick out of this. Oh, stuff. that's so nice. guys, All our brothers are here. Well, then you were there and you saw the troops going ashore? Well, sure, we were right there. October 20th, 19th. I guess if I had binoculars, I'd have seen uh, MacArthur land. Yeah. Is that, we were there that day. Isn't that so? That's cool. interesting. Yeah. What an experience, yeah. I should say. Well, then it was, see, then it was uh, five days later uh, when the Japs came down through Santa Bernardina Strait yeah. and Surigao Strait. They come in with like two fleets and uh, hopefully to wipe us out. That was. The, what you did there was was really the greatest. Story. Well, I mean, you read about all the coral sea and all, but that thing was done with, as you say, well, ten ships. I, it, it, it was it was amazing, and of course, like you, we didn't know what the heck was going on. No. All of a sudden, here were these shells flying overhead. And, um, 
What I wanted to ask you about that is, uh, <clears throat> did you move up uh, away from uh, away from the east side of, of Leyte? No, we were in Lady Gulf for two days and went right out. Oh, I see. Okay. Back to Ulithi. Back to Ulithi. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next uh, <laughs> adventure we had, I guess you call it that. Sure. Was uh, we got another radio message to go to. Castle Roads, uh, or what I can think of the name of it now. This is the uh, truck. Yes, yeah. truck. Another submarine. And we went there. Uh, and it was one of those nights where I was doing this straight ahead. We got there. We, we found, they, they got the ship. We were in sight of land. Uh, islands, of course, they were all atolls. And we shot the hedgehogs. Now you're familiar with hedgehogs. Oh, yeah. A lot of people never heard of those. They always think they drop the things off the end. Mm -hmm. But the hedgehogs were, I think, <clears throat> 24 rockets. Mm -hmm. And we shot those. And I was in after steering. Uh, since I was a helmsman, they put the chief one in the battles, you know. But I was in the after steering down below, which is a uh, mechanical steering, right. which you needed. Uh, and all of a sudden, boom, we got blown right out of the water. Oh. They hit that submarine with those rockets okay. and blew it up, blew wow. it right up. And we, uh, lights went out, our electricity was out because it severed a lot of mine. Right. And bodies started coming up. <clears throat> and I got a call from the captain. Now, I was kind of a jock, as I said, I used to dive off the bridge right. and get in the port where you could land like a. <laughs> and, he called, and honestly, God, I, I, he says, Higgins, there's some bodies out there, and our, our ships, our little stubble was going again, or Avisa, or our captain's boat. Would you dive in and pick up some pieces? And I thought, oh my God. And then he laughed like hell. He was <laughs> <laughs> I don't want more than you could see. You know? uh, oh, anyway, the, the significance of that was very important. Because on board that submarine were four ketons. Oh, yeah. And you know what a keton is? It's a suicide submarine. Oh, you always hear about kamikaze. Yeah. Suicide submarine. Four of them were on that. Yeah. All loaded. That, that was a big submarine. That was oh, yeah. That I class. Yeah, a big class. Yeah. It, it, it's all written up, and it's on a computer, a lot of it. Uh, four of them. And they all got blown up. And you can imagine the explosion wow. there was. My Lord, it was unbelievable. Sure. Well, we thought, you know, it was us blowing up. Uh, we finally, we had some genius guys on the ship. They finally got it back together again, and we got back to, okay. got back to Ulithi. Yeah. And then, uh, did, did you get a Purple Heart? No. <laughs> but I got a story I tell my kids. I'm a school teacher. And then I, t I tell kids, I said, uh, I got wounded in this arm. Uh, you know, I said, before the war, I could go just like that. Now I can only get about that high. And 95% of the kids fall for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> they sit there with the funniest look on their face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to finish, uh, the, the, not finish, uh, one of the experiences is exciting is going across the uh, Equator. Equator. Did you do it? Absolutely. Go through these. You become a shellback. You got a shell. Did you go through the. Uh, I went through the. the initiation. Tunnel. The tunnel. I went through the Get tunnel. Filled with garbage. Filled with garbage. Yeah. Jump in a little swimming pool with yeah. electric shock. Yeah. And you have the to track. kiss the, the fat belly of I the. I know. We went all through that. <laughs> Get your hair cut half off or oh, your yeah. beard cut half off. Yeah. They started on the captain, who was a good looking guy. <laughs> he backed off. <laughs> no, he backed. He wouldn't let his hair get cut. The captain. Oh. Was, uh, neat guy. I saw him after the war. Neat yeah. guy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that was that was really some day that was. Oh, that, was that, that oh that that hazing and experience. Yeah. And it was rough. I mean, they, rough. you went through the paddling and they hit your butt, man. You they hit you hard. Well, uh, those old timers, you know, they wanted to take it out on the youngsters. They ocean. took it out on us. Yeah. Uh, and then we. Uh, Next trip was up to Okinawa, uh, Iwo Jima, and we weren't there on D-Day, but 
we were there when the fighting was going on. Right. And then we went up to uh, early June. We went to Okinawa. You were in the Okinawa so campaign. Took I think we took supply ships or something mm -hmm. up there. And there we got in a great typhoon. That that was the sixth of typhoon. June. Oh yeah. No, that was terrible. That, oh, no. um, I was there in the ship, and, and it was a uh, interesting. The water was gray, like trembling. It yeah. was in the day. You could yeah. feel it. It was mm -hmm. just. It was just like it was shaking, you know. Yeah. I don't know what does that in a hurricane. I guess the, the atmosphere, the barometer. Yeah. Yeah. And it got so rough, and I'm steering this thing, <laughs> going up. You go up, 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 which was scary. And then you'd go down, and it would go right over the top of the ship. You'd be underwater. Yeah. And you were each one was scary because you're going down. You never thought you were going to go up. And if you went up, you knew you were going back down. Anyway, in that, I got finally put down in the after steering because it got so bad the chief had to take it over. And uh, there were three of us that did this shift. But, uh, I, so I'm back in this back room by myself in the back of this. Thing. Gotcha. And we got an order to go and, re and signal the ship the right course to take. We go cross grades. Boom, we got hit. And there's an article written up in, there's a DE newspaper. We went over 78 degrees. Oh my goodness. Now that's 90 degrees. Yeah. Seven, and and they, the limit on any ship is 72 degrees. Right. That's where you go over. We were 78 degrees. But we got hit back again and went up. Brought you back up. Uh, one guy got washed overboard and reached up and somebody grabbed him in the back of the ship. It's just like a miracle. Oh. Another guy went overboard, we never saw him again. Another guy, we had, we had traded our motorbike for a, a raft about a month before. You know how you do that, all kind of stuff. And, and the raft was sitting on this, tied up along there. The raft went off and a guy landed in it and they found him two days later. I mean, these are all miracle stories. Uh, two guys were killed on board yeah. with doors crushed them. Right. So we lost, I think, four or five, or I forget how many. How many were in the crew? Well, it was about 160 and 180. Mm -hmm. I think it was 180. Had about 10 officers. Yeah, 10 officers. Uh, but anyway, that the ship was destroyed. Uh, our whaleboat was gone. The stack was gone. It was just yeah. ripped apart. But it floated. <laughs> yes. Thank <laughs> goodness. Oh my now, you, were you uh, were you under fire by the the kamikazes? No, we never were under fire. Uh, we saw, them, but yeah. they always went for the carriers. Oh sure. You know, we saw them. not we weren't maybe ten times we saw them, you know, yeah. but never never came at us. Yeah. Uh, the ship was destroyed. It, it, the the safety line wrapped mm -hmm. around the propeller. We could only do about ten knots, mm -hmm. and then the whole ship would shake. Good grief. My all my records were washed overboard. My record being over the equator was washed. Everything was the office was washed out, wiped out. All the records and everything, but they 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 got they got them finally, you know, from Washington. Well, the, and then we went back to Guam. They couldn't fix us in Guam. And well, we get to go to Pearl, and we go to Pearl. Can't fix us. Ah, oh, we get to go to San Francisco. So we that's how we got back. Now this is before the Adam Ball. This is before the war. At Guam, there's a fellow named Ted Suzio from Cincinnati. Little fat brown kid. His dad owned a grocery store in Sedansville down there, and and, and Susio came on board, and he was in in he had spent some time in on Guam, and he went there ahead of me, and he talked to some guys he knew, and he bet me ten bucks that the war would be over in a month. Mm -hmm. He knew something, and I bet him, and I paid him off, right. because the war did end. They knew on that island something was cooking. On yeah. Guam and Saipan, they knew yeah. that there was some bomb being built. They, well, they didn't know what it was, but they knew it was. Right. But anyway, we went back to the States, which is another real quick interesting story, if you uh, want to hear it. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I came home on leave, and, and they, they were repairing the ship, and there's a picture of it modified. They took the, they took the uh, torpedoes off of it. They added all 20-millimeter guns all over. You'll see it. It's, we'll show it to you later. Uh, so they, I was there 20 days, and 
I think I was home 16 days. Every day I went to Coney Island and swimming, and every night I went up there dancing with the girls. Sure. <laughs> and we had to get it done because, you, you know, we really were scheduled to go to the invasion. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we figured we would make it because we knew what was happening. The DEs, they were knocking them off left and right. So my dad knew a guy in Chicago. We didn't have any money. We were poor. Uh, and he said, and he was a chef on the city of San Francisco. Mm. And he said, I get you a free ride. So my dad drove in Chicago. I got on the train as a stowaway. And I'm in the, uh, the yard, the uh, dining room. And I, they had a little compartment for this dad. And I stayed there. When I got off and said, I didn't know anything. Didn't communicate with anybody. It took two, three days. Mm -hmm. When I got off, San Francisco was crazy. They had dropped the bomb. Oh, my goodness. They had dropped the bomb. August the 9th. And I didn't know, you know, I mean, sure. until I got off. Well, San Francisco was crazy. Well, I got off, and I had this guy had a son that, that got me on the ship. He lived in Oakland, Berkeley. And I went up to Berkeley and stayed with them, the Mortimers. And his daughter was Oppenheimer's secretary. Oh, for heaven's sake. You know, Oppenheimer built the bomb, sure. and she lived there, and he knew, he knew what was going on. She was escorted every day by FBI from home to work. So he knew all about the bomb. So it was quite interesting, oh, kind of being on the inside, you know. I should say. And then we went to, uh, we went up to, we were at uh, Vallejo. Vallejo, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the ship was at. I'm getting confused. You know, I went back there. This was after, yeah, this was after the bomb was dropped. Got off the train, went up there, and we got all set to go back to Japan. Mm -hmm. Now the war had ended, but we were going to Japan to relieve. Yeah. I figured, hell, I'll be here the rest of my life if we have to go all the way back out there. And this is true. We got on the ship about six in the morning. I was going with a girl at the unit at San uh, in in. Uh, San Francisco, the University of San Francisco. I was going with her, stayed there until about four in the morning, finally got back to the base at six, got on a ship just in time, and went out in the harbor. I didn't have any duty. I wasn't on any duty. And we got hit with a, we, we got ramped by an uh, oiler. Just oh, forget right in front of us. Oh, Bang. I, I don't know if the captain deliberately did it or not. <laughs> they put a big hole in the front. No kidding. So, yeah. And so we go back in, and then they canceled this and sent us to San Diego. They didn't want us to go back out. No. And San Diego, as soon as I got there, I was transferred, because I was a yeoman, I was transferred to Long Beach, Roosevelt Base, where I worked in the discharge office sure. till May. This mm -hmm. was from November to May of 46. Yeah, killed me. Everybody was home, everybody was starting school, and I'm out there doing nothing, you know. And you, you just didn't have enough points, huh? No, well, no, yeomans were necessary to do all this oh, paperwork and these guys sure. out. End of the war. And my job was, I was, I don't know why they picked me, but I sat in the window, and they, when they come in from the base, every guy would come up into this office, but there was a window, and I would tell them where to go. So I met a lot of great guys. Oh, sure. So, Got to, and I got all phone calls. Went to a lot of, uh, I saw Red Skelton, I saw Baby Snooks, uh, went to the Rose Bowl Parade. All they, they, they went six sailors for this, 10 for that. The Rose Bowl thing was neat because there were 10 of us. We got a bus up, stood on the street. We're supposed to be guards for the Rose Bowl Parade, first Rose Bowl Parade. Like stood on the street, then we uh, got on the bus, fed us, Went to the Rose Bowl and sat on the feet. Oh, the first that. that was neat. Oh. And I only did it because I was the guy got the phone oh, sure. uh, That was interesting. Uh, anyway, then I finally, finally got discharged after what seemed an eternity out there. Yeah. You know, because uh, uh, San Francisco, uh, California winters gray and you know, gloomy. It's foggy all the time. Mm -hmm. Going back one time from my girls' uh, the, uh, the college. I got on a bus and he got lost and he wound up in Sacramento. Oh, good heavens. On a Greyhound bus. You were way out of the way. That's true. <laughs> anyway, I talk too much. <laughs> no, yeah, that's wonderful. Well, you know, uh, I, I, I was a West Coast guy. I was born and raised in Oregon. And okay. I went to Oregon State and then the war started. and the, So I went to war for Oregon, but 
San Francisco at that time, that was a great fleet city. I mean, Liberty was wonderful, and uh, it's changed a lot since then. Oh, I've been out to Oh, yeah. yeah. It's changed a lot. But the spirit there, and, and San Diego was the same way. San Diego was a great fleet city. Oh, it was a fleet city, I'll tell Boy, you. Oh, my God. Because we were sailors everywhere. We I mean, were in and out of North Island. You know, and so was Honolulu. Oh, that, that was great, great liberty. Well, uh, Jim, the, uh, uh, what, uh, what rate did you finally come out with? Second class. Second you, have, class? you have to learn shorthand to get first class. Now, how the heck are you going to learn shorthand on a ship? <laughs> now, I, I got the book and I'd work on it, but uh -huh. I didn't learn three words. Shorthand's hard. You know, you Terrible. Know. So I, I stayed second class. Good. Uh, Good. Well, you certainly, you certainly, made a tremendous contribution and I just, I, I think about that little DE, that little tin can you were on. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned the publication and so forth. You belong to the, the DE the Association. Escort Sailors Association. Yeah, the DE sure. Escort Sailors. I can to that paper. too because we were, yeah. uh, we I were, get that paper. Yeah. And, uh, we had, uh, I got a call about five years ago from Eileen O'Connor, uh, I guess. And Eileen said, are you Jim Higgins? Were you on the, uh, the uh, comp? And I said, yeah. She says, my father was on the comp. She was a psychiatrist. Uh -huh. Her father and her husband died the same week. Oh, my goodness. And she lost it. Oh. She got fat. She lost it, quit her job, went into, I guess she had money. She went into the doldrums and she got hooked on our ship. And she got the reunion together. We met in uh, Albany, New York, about 30 guys. She put that all together, put another one together four years ago in uh, Florida. Uh, I, after she did all that, I wrote everybody and collected like $400. And I had a beautiful plaque Chief, we call it Chief, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I made a beautiful park. And my son and I drove up to her place in Erie. She lived in Erie, Pennsylvania, and we gave it to her. Had a great time with her. Several guys came to that. We had like a mini reunion. That's wonderful. Uh, she uh, just in her house was. I couldn't get in her dining room. It was all full of Navy stuff. She had every Navy film ever made. She had true? books. She had our binoculars. She had logs. She had all kinds of stuff. Ship. So it was, we had a story, you know, we had a wonderful sure. story. Sure. She's got a, a long sign. If you go to DE 439, there's a whole history of our ship on the computer. Oh, she did all that stuff. In fact, when I wrote three or four chapters with some of the stories I told you. She's got about a 10 chapter book, but she hasn't got it published yet, but mm -hmm. she's working on it. She wants to get it yeah. printed up. Well, the, the, um, there's been a book, more than one book actually, of the Sammy B, the Sammy B. Roberts, because uh, what happened to, to her <clears throat> was that uh, um, Commander Copeland, who was the skipper of Sammy B. Roberts, the original <clears throat> DE at the Battle of Samar, uh, they were so brave they turned, he turned the ship and headed directly at the Japanese battleship. Firing, firing their five inches, you know, and their 20s and 40 millimeters, and, and they just went. And Admiral Karina, the Japanese uh, commander-in-chief of, of, of the squadron, you know, he turned. He turned. He turned, and it was just amazing. And those ships, like yours, they laid smoke screens for us, hiding us. Uh, we laid one. And then the wind would blow it away. Then they'd lay more smoke, and we were we were. And that that's I think that was the, the, the turning point in the war. I mean that made thing because if you wouldn't have done it, if your ships hadn't turned it, but the, the, the Philippines had been very hard to get back into. Very hard. Very, very hard. Difficult. But of course, there again, like like you, you know, we didn't know about the bomb. And we didn't know that a year, a year and a half later, what, what would happen, but uh, we all... No, when, when I was scheduled to go back out there, I told my family, you probably, 
Because I knew, you, you would, I saw the row at Okinawa, or these ships, I saw the graveyard, they had like 30 ships, I don't know if you were there, but 30 ships and they're all hung apart, oh, torn yeah. apart, ripped apart, Boy, tops gone, they horrible. 30 of them laying around, yeah. you know? and we knew that was us, but yeah. we were lucky, we did, we got, I guess the storm saved our lives, yeah. Yeah. because we'd have been on that. Well, that's, uh... well, uh, the experience to me, as you said, was exciting and fun. There was fear, you know, a little yeah. fear in it. And if you but we were young and you know, well, I was 19, I guess, by the time I all went on. Just imagine. But out of that, huh. I got oh, a master's degree. Yeah. Paid for. GI Bill. GI Bill. You and a house. Right, the one percent loan on my house, and I got a master's degree, which I tell kids every day. I could. I had three boys. Go in, you know. No, no. Of course, they grew up in the Vietnam area, and there was everything was anti-war. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I said, go in the Navy. It was safe. I said, I, would, I was in three years, never missed a mail or a show. Yep. Yep. Uh, never. Yep. And that's great. You know, that's, that's great. great. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was involved. I mean, we were involved. You bet. You yeah. were out there in harm's way. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, that's. Uh, it, 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 and the kids would say, why would you go in? Why, why would you go in the war? And I said, and they asked me what I think of this war, and I'm opposed to this war. Uh, how it's run, okay. Right. Uh, and they said, well, why did you go in? And I said, you did not think of not going in. It wasn't a yeah, thing. thing. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it, it was just part of life. Absolutely. You went in. Absolutely. You went in. If you didn't go in, you were nothing. You were a draft dodger. You were draft dodger. Even like though you that. might have hit one lung or something. Yeah, right. It didn't matter. You were in. No, it, so that it was a good experience for me. It, it, yeah. was, it was a great, great... One other thing, that uh, I've always wanted to write a book. I did write a book in psychology, but that was a textbook. But I did want to write a book, but I don't have the ability to do it. There were about six guys in that ship that I hated. Now, you develop resentments against guys, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I call them the rats and so on. Yeah. One guy come aboard tattooed, we picked him up at Pearl. He was tattooed from here to here. Mustache, beard. He was a coxswain. Yeah. And we figured this guy must have been in Pearl Harbor. He must have been a young guy. He had never been out of the States. Oh, it was his first time on a ship. Well, what you did on a ship, you, you stayed in line to eat. He went on the right port side. Sure. And the line went down and you, you ate as quickly as possible because guys are thrown up and all this crap. But we were in line and he goes to the head of the line. Boom. Parts down. And everybody looked at everybody and the most quiet guy, my dear friend Phil, who died before I, this reunion, his sons were there. Phil didn't say a word. He was a radio man. The next day, and this is true, the guy gets up, we're all in line, and the coxswain walks up, and Phil goes up, wham, knocked him out. No Nobody said a word. Uh -huh. <laughs> the guy from then on stayed at the end of the war. <laughs> now, after the war, I don't know what he was in the hospital for, but he got it. it this is in the, for, uh, what's the base? The Marine Basin. It's Vallejo, uh, all. Maryland. had a Marine hospital for guys that were amputees. Well, he gets in there for some, some kind of sickness. And the guy, wait, the, guy, the guy cleaning his bedpan was slow and he reached out and hit him. Because, oh. well, the guy that was, was blind, hmm. you know, he was blind and he was doing these routine jobs. Sure. Well, this guy got 20 years, this oh, guy. Man. One of my guys was down the tube. Yeah. The other one was one of those Puerto Rican guys on nasty stuff. He, he was a guy that got syphilis, and I would take care of him. Yeah. Uh, one of them, this, this is weird, because you know, I didn't fight these guys, I just didn't like them, you know? And one of the guys got killed on the ship, in one of these dory that hit him. Oh, yeah. So that was three. The fourth guy, and I, his name was Hardy, I called him the rat. He lived in Gloversville, New York. <laughs> uh, he get, we get off at Vallejo after the war. He goes into a bar. 
And there's me and a couple of girls. And the girl goes to John and he stole her purse. Oh, brother. What a low life. Now, I know all this because I would sit in on these captain's logs. You sure. Know, stole the purse and goes next door to the barber shop. And the girl comes out and they caught him. Uh -huh. They caught him and boom, he's, he's, a, uh, he's, a, uh, I think they gave him 10 years or something. They were tough on sailors, you know, because uh, they didn't want all this business. Sure. I forget the other two, but I was going to write a novel about this yeah, with all the funny stuff. Yeah. You know, which should have been interesting, but <laughs> yeah. I worked all my life. I've worked every day of my life, I think. I know. I have so I, I didn't have time to do that. No, I know. But anyway, it was a good experience. I mean, well, that that is uh, that is really something. And Jim, uh, here you are, and you got your master's degree. You've had experience as a coach, a teacher, uh, and uh, what you did. And now you're recording, and well, it, I, it will be well well edited so that you don't have to worry about anything. Well, Ted, you're a great interviewer. Well, and you got me talking. Well, thank you. I don't talk much about the war. I, I very seldom do at school. Well, I, I understand. I don't that. do it. I understand that. Uh, and unless so, they ask. Yeah. Unless they ask. We're, we're, we're One finished. interesting story. I was in a class the other day at the School for Forming Arts. And the assignment was trace. The, the, I get assignments as a sub, you know. <clears throat> to trace the recapture of the islands going to Japan in World War II. Oh, boy. And I told the class, if you want the real story, I can tell you, I was on every island. Nobody has said a word. They yes. don't care today. Is that so? I, I see that lack of patriotism today. Oh, it's, it's, it's rampant. Now, I can understand it with the war. It's rampant. But, uh, uh, I mean, I can understand opposing the war. Well, the, because, it's, it, to me, it's run poorly. Well, that's all. I'm going to give it a pump to between, the between you and me, and we understand each other, because we've shared the same experiences. But, <clears throat> the generations between ours and the present day, three generations now, uh, whether it was the Vietnam War or what it might have been, there has been a complete change of attitude, a lack of dedication in general uh, about young people going into the service yeah. and, and protecting their country. I'm for the draft. I've always been for the draft. Yeah. Yeah. If we would draft kids, it would say thousands of kids that are just oh, yeah. from so Cincinnati. A, a yeah, three out of four kids don't graduate in the Cincinnati public schools. You know, three out of four don't graduate. I know. I know. The draft.